What's going on guys, Nathan here. Today we're gonna to talk about the five poker hands that all beginners should never play. If you're playing these hands right now, cut it out. I'm gonna give you step-by-step -step solutions and also tell you what hands to play. Let's jump into this. All right guys, so counting down from five to one, these are the top five hands that I've seen as a 10 plus year professional that costs beginners the most money and that so many of my students struggle with as well. Let's jump into it. Number five is ace three offsuit. So guys, I've made entire videos here on the channel talking about these ace rag hands. That's, by the way, what a hand like this is often referred to. When you have an ace and you have a small card and they are of different suits, this is called ace rag. And these hands are often highly overvalued by beginners and it gets them in all sorts of trouble. The problem here, guys, is that while yes, you can make top pair with the ace, which is the best top pair in the game. However, you are very, very often going to be out kicked by any competent player. Now let me explain out kicked for you beginners watching this video. In poker we are always trying to make the best five card hand so therefore if somebody has a hand like ace king, ace queen, ace jack and you hit top pair and they also hit top pair. I'm going to give you an example by the way in one second here. Their king or their queen or their jack the other card in their hand will play because once again guys it's the best five card poker hand. So you call raise with ace of hearts, three of spades, and the flop comes down with an ace of diamonds, ten of clubs, five of hearts. A lot of beginners and amateurs are ready to celebrate. We got top pair. Amazing. However, guys, the simple math tells us in a situation like this that a hand like ace king, as I just mentioned, has you literally crushed in this situation. You literally have to catch a three on the flop or turn, and there's only three more threes remaining in the deck, and this is why you only have 12% chance to win versus ace ace king and we don't need to be any kind of math genius at all guys to understand that when we're putting our money in with such poor odds we're never going to have success in this game so guys like with a lot of the hands that you're going to see on this list i would recommend just folding this hand preflop the vast majority of the time and only playing it when you're stealing the blinds now i'm going to put the image on your screen right now of exactly what i mean by stealing the blinds this is a situation where you are on the cutoff the button or in the small blind and everybody else has folded and you have an opportunity to what we call steal the blinds. This is a highly profitable play. I don't have time to go into it in depth in this video. I've already made other videos on the channel talking about this, but you do want to lower your standards in a situation like this. By the way, if you want to know all hands that I suggest playing from all seats at the poker table, I have charts, diagrams, and everything in my free poker cheat sheet. That'll be the top link in the description below. But let's move on to hand number four four that all beginners should never play and that is jack seven suited guys a hand like jack seven suited and suited by the way means both cards are the same suit so spades in this example here guys a hand like this is often referred to as suited trash because it is easily out kicked as we just saw in the previous example this means that somebody can have a hand like ace jack or king jack for example and we're going to see that in just a second here that can have us in a mathematically very disadvantageous position if we hit top pair and they also hit top pair with a higher kicker. The other problem with this hand guys is that it only makes one straight with both cards and this is not optimal in a game like No Limit Texas Hold'em. You want to give yourself more ways to win and that is why a hand like Jack 10 suited for example can make far more straights and that is why you typically want to play hands that are closer together like a Jack 10 or a Jack 9 for example because you can make far more straights with both cards with those kinds of hands. But let's give you an example. Once again, you have jack seven of spades as mentioned and you raise preflop and a tag calls. Now a tag stands for tight and aggressive. Again, I don't have time to break down all five of my major poker player types in this video. I've made other videos talking about that here on the channel and I also discuss all of the player types in detail in my free poker cheat sheet. Once again, top link in the description below. But this is one of these tight and aggressive players. That's what tag stands for. This is a regular player. You see them day in and day out at the poker table. They're competent players. They're studying the game. They take it seriously like you. They're probably watching videos just like this one. This is not a recreational player. This is not what we call a fish. This is a decent player. So flop comes down with the ace of hearts, five of clubs, and jack of hearts. Guys, once again, you're in a situation where you're horribly outkicked. We only have second pair in this situation, but if this other player has a hand like queen jack of diamonds, for example, you are only 11 
20% to win versus that hand and you're going to tie you're going to chop the pot around 20% of the time but guys again we don't need to be any kind of math genius to understand that these are terrible odds and that is why we typically do not want to be playing hands like this in the first place most decent tight and aggressive players like this are not going to play this hand and that's why you're not going to see this hand on my recommended starting hands in my free poker cheat sheet because good players simply will not play this hand guys once again solution here is to fold this hand pre-flop the vast majority of the time only play it when you're stealing the blinds all right guys let's move on to hand number three here this is a little bit different type of hand this is called a suited one gap or a hand like seven five suited for example hearts in this example here guys the biggest problem with these hands is while they look very pretty and that's why a lot of amateurs and beginners love to play hands like this i am sorry to be the bearer of bad news but these are indeed long-term losing hands and by the way you don't have to take my word for it if you play online poker you can just use a program like poker tracker i've used this hud program for over 10 years as a professional and you can literally go into the program and you can see which hands are winners for you over the long run and which hands are losers for you and i guarantee if you played any amount of hands a hand like seven five suited is going to be a losing hand for you i will include links to the poker tracker hud that i use once again in the description below but let me illustrate this better for you once again here's an example you have seven five of hearts versus a tag once again tight and aggressive good player flop comes down with a king of spades seven of clubs and two of diamonds this player bets into you what should you do guys there's no easy answers in a situation like this we have second pair with a bad kicker once again if this player has a hand like a seven we already talked about the math in the previous examples you already know we're going to be in bad shape and this is once again guys the reason why most good players will simply fold this hand preflop and never get themselves in this position in the first place guys a lot of your success in poker like life business anything is simply choosing to pick your battles more wisely and never allowing yourself to get in sticky situations like this in the first place so guys just fold this hand preflop vast majority of the time you can steal the blinds with it sometimes and i also will play this hand sometimes in position and that means on the button or the cutoff i will put the image on your screen once again right now so you know where those seats are at the poker table i will play this hand sometimes on those two seats because they are the most profitable seats at the poker table and i will specifically do it versus the recreational players aka the fish and the reason those seats are so profitable by the way is because you get to act last on the flop turn and river massive proven statistical advantage when you get to see what they do first before you decide to play but guys once again in most situations with a hand like this just fold it pre-flop save yourself some money all right guys let's move on to hand number two that all beginners should never play and that is king 10 offsuit guys king 10 is a bad hand no matter how you cut it and amateurs and beginners typically lose a fortune with a hand like this versus competent players. Let me give you an example again. So you call before the flop with king of hearts, 10 of spades versus a knit. Now a knit is another regular player type, a competent player. This is the tightest player at the table. And these players typically are not messing around. You've seen these players no doubt in your games and they don't bluff very much guys. Typically when they're making big bets and raises, they have it. So flop comes down with the king of diamonds, jack of clubs for diamonds and it's time to celebrate right we got top pair guys once again versus a player type like this who's probably only playing hands like ace king king queen king jack we are absolutely smoked by all these hands ace king is 87 percent to win versus you in this situation and that is why we are literally digging our own grave by continuing to play hands like this often referred to as trap hands and that is why you should fold this hand preflop like many of the hands on this list and only play it when stealing the blinds. All right, let's move on to the number one hand that beginners should never play, and that is another trap hand, which is ace nine offsuit. Now, let me explain trap hand, by the way. This is a hand that, once again, a lot of beginners and amateurs overvalue because it's got an ace in it, but it's a trap, guys, because if you hit your top pair, you're going to be outkicked once again by any competent player. It's also important to note with a hand like ace nine that it makes zero strength rates with both cards we already talked about that before remember with the jack seven that you typically want to look for cards that are closer together because they're going to make you more straights which just gives us more ways to win obviously a good thing right so let me give you an example once again you've got the ace of diamonds and nine of spades versus a tag again 
a competent, decent, tight and aggressive player. Flop comes down with the ace of clubs, 10 of hearts, three of diamonds, guys. We already know a good player like this is not gonna be playing trashy hands like an ace eight, ace seven, ace six like this. No, guys, they're playing the ace king. They're playing the ace queen. They're playing the ace jack. And once again, ace queen here is 85% to win versus you. Guys, a lot of beginners and amateurs come to me. My students, they ask me, why am I not winning? And it's because when you consistently put yourself in situations like this where you have such poor odds statistically to win, you're not going to win at a game like poker over the long run, guys. The way to consistently win at poker is to consistently put the odds and the statistics in your favor and let the math sort itself out over the long run. You cannot fight the math in this game, guys, no matter how you cut it. If you consistently give yourself only 15% chance to win like this, you're going to lose at this game over the long run. So solution, once again, guys, is to just simply fold this hand the vast majority of the time pre-flop and only play it when stealing the blinds. Guys, let me know in the comments below which hands you have the most trouble with and like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. And finally, if you want to know my entire strategy for smashing the small and mid stakes games, once again, with all of the hands that I actually do suggest playing, make sure you grab a copy of my free poker cheat sheet. That'll be the top link in the description below. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. This has been Nathan Williams with BlackRain79.com.